we are going to discuss the importance of studying economics and we're going to explain the relationship between production and division of labor. And we're going to evaluate the significance of scarcity too. So let's get started. So economics and scarcity. Economics is the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. And we're going to talk about the scarcity in, the, in later in the lesson. It is kind of what we lack in this society, like what we what we need the most. And these can be individual decisions, family decisions and business decisions or societal decisions. So scarcity means that human want for goods, services and resources exceed what is available. So that means because we know human has infinite need, but resources in our planet is always limited. So we can't we, we can't always satisfy that satisfies our um, want and what um, and resources such as labor tools land and raw materials are necessary to produce the goods and services we want but they exist in limited supply in limited supply that's what I said and moreover the ultimate scarce resource is time and as everyone has just 24 hours in a day, that's fair enough because everyone, obviously everyone is in a different level, but we're all, since we're all human, we only have 24 hours a day and that's, that's in common, all of us. And the problem of scarcity in every society at every level must make choices about how to use its resources due to scarcity because it is limited, but our want is unlimited. There is never enough money in the budget to do everything. Choices must be made, whether it is between a new car or a vacation or for a family, or allocating funds to different sectors like education or defense. Limited resources require efficient allocation to obtain the most goods and services possible. So we have to meet its maximum efficiency to, in order to make the scarcity at the lowest level. In the division of specialization of labor, it is another really important portion of the basic economics. It, help, it helps us to get deep into the basic economics knowledge. And the concept, the concept of it was introduced by Adam Smith in his book, The Wealth of Nations. It means that the production of a good or service is divided into different tasks performed by different workers. And that's, that's how the world we are living right now formed. We have different jobs and different workers here and they have different duties to do to, to whatever contributes to their work. And specialization allows workers to focus on their areas of exp expertise and leading to increased productivity and higher quality output. So we have as now we're, we're in American American society, we have in and out workers, we have business and teachers, that's all of them are in different division of specialization of labor and that and they have different duty to increase the productivity. It also enables businesses to take advantage of economics of scale, reducing the average cost of production per unit. That's fair. And why the division of labor increases productivity? That's a good point. And here's why. Specialization allows workers to focus on tasks where they have a comparative advantage based on their skills, talents, and interests. So let's say Jack is good at football and he wants and he's better he's better to become a PE teacher instead of an artist who paint. We need to know what what is our comparative advantages advantages in order to do our uh, in order to perform our talents in a maximum level. And specialized workers often become more efficient and innovative in their specific tasks. 
businesses benefit from economics of scale where increased production levels lead to lower average cost the division and specialization of labor contribute to increased production and consumption in society so when everyone can do can do their maximum efficiency in their whatever area we can make the society in a fall in a fully work condition and trade and markets specialization and division of labor are only effective if workers can use their income to purchase the goods and services they need so everything beside that it would not consider in the range of trade and market because it doesn't produce anything and it doesn't c contribute anything to the country's gpt and we will talk about gtp in the later lesson the market allows individuals to specialize in a particular skill set and trade their products or services for other goods they require. The market system facilitates the efficiency, the, the efficient allocation of resources and enables individuals to focus on their areas of expertise, which is a little overlap to the previous slides, but that's okay. And why do we need to study economics? That's the most important slide in this lesson. Economics provides the tool to solve complex problems and answer important questions. It is crucial for understanding global issues like poverty, inequality, and environmental challenges. These, quest these problems are they're basically around us every day, everyone. So it is really necessary to learn what is economics because it, it, it's, it just haunted everyone. A basic understanding of economics is essential for informed citizenship, enabling citizen individuals to make intelligent decisions on budgets, regulations, and laws as we grow up. We have our we have our own business and families. We have to consider what is the best for us, and like we have to know what is the best decisions for our family and what is in the budget or and what is not. Studying economics enhances critical thinking skills and provides new perspectives on personal business and political decisions. So that helps us to do a lot better in future decisions and stuff. And now we are finally entering our practice problem time. So the first question, what is the primary focus of economics? It might not be in the, it might not be in the presentation, but it is a basic question for economics. And we can take a second or a minute to think about it. It doesn't need a lot of, it doesn't need a lot of knowledge to think about that, but we can take a second. So we can pause the video and think about it. And after we get the answer, we can start the video again and we will discuss it together. So what is the primary focus on economics? The primary focus is the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. It examines individual family business and societal decisions regarding the allocation of limited resources to satisfy unlimited wants. And that's also the, the definition of scarcity. Scarcity is, well, the definition of scarcity is limited. It's not enough for everyone. So we have to, we have to give up something in order, in order to gain something that we need more than the alternative one. The next question, how is how does scarcity influence economic decisions? Take seconds to think about that and we will come back and discuss it. So now scarcity means that resources are limited while human wants are virtually infinite. This forces individuals, businesses and societies to make choices about how to allocate their limited resources efficiently to satisfy as many needs and wants as possible because 
but we all know our our planet our earth doesn't have infinite resources for our for for us to use so we have to so we have to know that scarcity is the basic main priority problem in economics and why is time considered the ultimate scarce resource that's a great question for me when i first learned economics because i didn't know the answer so i googled it so i google it and still got it wrong but now let's think about it and let's see if we can get the right answer So time is considered the ultimate scarce resource because everyone, regardless of wealth, has only 24 hours in a day. And this limited amount of time must be allocated among various activities such as earning income, leisure, and rest. And that's what I said in the beginning of the video. No matter what level, no matter what society, no matter what academic degree you have, as human, we only have 24 hours in a day for everyone. Everyone is same. It's the same for that one. So that's why it is the ultimate scarce resources. And scarcity's impacts on production provide an example of how scarcity affects the production of goods and services. So this question is quite is quite a, a broad question. You can have various answers for these. Feel free to think about that in different ways and in different perspectives. Try to be creative for this. Try to be try to be creative for this question because it doesn't it doesn't really have a right answer. Just an example of how scarcity affects the production, and that will be fine. And take a second to think about that, and we will continue in three seconds. In three, two, one. In 2015, the U.S. had over 158 million workers and a total land area of 3.79 million square miles. While these numbers are large, they are not infinite. This limited availability of labor and land restricts the number of goods and services that can be produced, highlighting the impact of scarcity. So the amount of um, so the amount of goods, of goods that we can produce is directly determined by the limited resources that we own. So for example, when we need to grow, let's say we need to grow some um, flour or, or um, some fruit from, from fruit, some fruit trees, we absolutely need some land. We absolutely need some land, water and sun and labor and fertile to feed those trees to en enable to keep to keep growing so we can have fruit but if the resources that we can that we can put on those trees are limited so then that means we have limited fruits that we can have so scarcity is really important and that and this answer is um, an example of how scarcity affects the production that's one of the example, and there's a lot. There's a lot more, and feel free to comment it, whatever you want. This is not. The, this is not the only answer. And decisions due to scarcity. What are some examples of decisions that must be made due to the scarcity? That. That's about scarcity again, but that's a great question. That's really. That's really valid for our. For our. If we're if you guys were um, new learners for economics, that's really part that's really crucial for us. So take a second to think about that and just give some examples. There's no right answer, so your answer will be right in some point if it doesn't if it does make sense. Families must decide whether to spend money on a fee on a new car or a vacation. Towns must choose between funding police and fire protection or the school system. And nations must decide whether to allocate more funds to national defense or environmental protection. These decisions illustrate the need to prioritize resource allocation due to scarcity. So that's so that's the um so that's what we we're talking about earlier in the video. We have to give us something in order to gain what our 
that the thing that that we most need and that and that thing that we give up for for the for our priority needs is called the uh, um the opportunity cost which we will learn which we will learn in the later lesson and yeah and let's go to the next question and explain the concepts of division of labor as introduced by Adam Smith. So as we can see, we have, before we're answering the question, I, um, I think I need to explain the picture a little bit. So as we can see, it is in a factory and everyone in there, in there is working on their own things and they're working on their own areas. And um, these are called the division of labor. So like, your boss let's say let's say in a let's say in a in a school the boss and teachers are in two different division of labor because they are in charge of two different things and they have different duties on different things and the concept of it is the process by which the production of a good or service is broken down into several tasks each performed by different workers and this specialization allows workers to focus on sp specific tasks, improving in efficiency and productivity. And that's division of labor by Adam Smith. And increased production through specialization. How does specialization contribute to increased production according to Adam Smith? Specialization allows Workers to focus on the part of the production process where they have an advantage, learn to produ produce more quickly and with higher quality, and take advantage of economies of scale. And this results in a greater quantity of output compared to if each worker tries to produce the entire good or service on their own. Which is briefly, while well, it briefly explained. Um, the production through specialization it is it is crucial for a division of labor because it is well yeah and what what are economies of scale and how do they benefit business economies of scale occur when the average cost of producing each unit declines as the level of production increases this allows businesses to produce goods more efficient, efficiently and at a lower cost per unit, benefiting from larger scale production. And why is trade necessary for specialization to be effective? Specialization only makes sense if workers can use the pay they receive to purchase the other goods and services they need. Trade allows individuals to focus on producing what they do best and then exchange their products for other goods and services, facilitating a more efficient allocation of resources. And how does studying economics contribute to good citizenship and understanding global issues? Let's quick go over it, because that's really a, a basic question. And yeah, so studying economics helps individuals understanding and, and evaluate economic issues, make informed decisions about budgets and policies and distinguish between sound argument and nonsense. It provides tools to address global problems, such as poverty and environmental challenges, making one a well-rounded thinker and an informed voter, which is similar to math. They both just enhances our critical thinking skills and our brain cells, whatever. And thank 